Hey guys, it's Dale from Elephant Memories. In today's video, we're going to laser cut quarter inch Baltic birch boxes, then do a resin ocean pour on top using printed transparencies to make them even more interesting. When you sign up for my newsletter in the link below, you can gain access to my free resource page on my website, which includes a PDF file on this box. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more project ideas like this one. You'll find a material list in the description below. So let's get started, shall we? Once you finish cutting your box, you'll have six tabbed pieces. First thing you'll want to do is clean the surface by sanding the burn residue off both sides. You can use a sander or sand by hand with 220 grit sandpaper. Next, seal the grain with a wood sealer like shellac. This dries in about 15 to 20 minutes. Now, we're going to prep the top for our resin pour. Use painter's tape to mask the bottom. Carefully trim the excess off. We are also going to tape the sides and create a drip edge. This is very important to keep the sides clear of resin so the top will fit properly. Here, we're just wrapping the edge, leaving the tape hanging below the bottom. Fold a piece of tape onto itself to make it double-sided and put that on a riser. I just use my favorite iced coffee lids. You will also want to check to see if the top is level before you pour. You can often correct this just by pushing on one side or by adding another piece to one side of the riser. For my boxes, I'm going to use some painted transparencies. I found some on different resin supply sites. I'll also have some unique ones on my website, which is linked in the description below. I found if you paint the underside white, it really makes the colors pop. Once the paint is dry, I mix up some clear 15 minute epoxy. You want to make sure that the cutout is secure to the wood before pouring the resin, otherwise it will float to the surface. You can just squeeze a small amount of both parts on wax paper and mix well with a toothpick. Spread a thin layer of epoxy on the bottom and place on the lid I usually keep it opposite of the hinged edge. We want to make sure that the resin we pour on the top doesn't eventually spread to the hinged edge or it might not fit properly when we put this together. So I'm going to slightly raise this side by using the tips of toothpicks under the risers. For this turtle, I'm going to use two different translucent blues in my resin. This is a mix of a few drops of acrylic ink and a very small amount of pigment powders. Pour the resin on and spread it. I'm using a silicone brush to do this. Pop the bubbles with a butane torch, then add a small line of resin mixed with white pigment paste. Use a heat gun on high heat and gently blow the white over the colors to give some nice wave effects. These are so much fun. Even my little jumping spider. I just put a clear resin pour over him. I like to let these dry for 48 hours 
At the 24 hour mark, the resin is dry, but still a little malleable. At this stage, it is easy to accidentally scratch or put a dent in the resin. At 48 hours, the resin is hard. Be sure to cover the boxes to help keep dust and debris off while drying. Peel the risers off the bottom. The waste resin will just pop off a plastic riser. Save these for future projects. Here you can see the runoff from when we used the heat gun. If your heat gun has a kickstand, open that and put the heat setting on high. Hold the edge four inches above the nozzle and move down the edge. Be sure to keep it moving so you don't overheat it. Be very careful with your hands as well. It does get quite hot. It's a good idea to wear gloves, preferably work gloves for protection. Now just peel the tape. Do this for each side. Do not let the tape touch the nozzle. This angle is deceptive but the tape is not actually close here. Only a few seconds is needed to heat the resin enough to pull the tape off, revealing perfect edges. If you did get some leakage, you might have to do some light sanding so the lid will fit properly. Time to assemble your box. You should have the lid, the bottom, two identical sides with holes for the hinge, a short back, and a taller front. Once again, we'll use clear 15-minute epoxy. If you get some on your gloves, you can clean them off with baby wipes. Now, start with one side piece and the back, which is the short one. Spread a thin layer of epoxy inside the notches. The two pieces should just slide together. Next is the taller front piece. Add your epoxy and slide in place. Now we put the lid on. Do not get any epoxy on this. The single tab at the back is the hinge. It's important that the back piece is the short piece so the lid can pivot properly to open. Just put the tab into the hole on the side. Add epoxy to the other side piece. Putting this one in place is a little tricky. You will need to line up all the notches with the front and the back, as well as the tab on the lid. Carefully move the pieces until they just snap together. Check to make sure that the lid easily opens. Place a clean piece of wax paper over the top and flip upside down. Press all the sides together and make sure they're all aligned properly. Put epoxy on all the notches on the bottom piece. You can also put a dab on the top of the tabs as well. This should just pop into place. You'll want to let this set overnight. Here is a closer look of how the hinge works. The short back piece gives clearance for the lid to pivot on the tabs to open. And that's it. This is such a fun project. Be sure to tag me at One Elephant Memories on your social media pages so I can see what you've been doing with this. 
If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to see more videos like this. We'll see you next time.